Hello everybody. In today's video, we're going to be showing you a quick hack that you can use when you're trying to make electrical connections with a mismatched gauge between your wire and your connector. So in this case here, we have a 24 gauge wire and we have a 22 gauge connector. Now typically we like to use stuff that's lying around the house. So uh, in an ideal situation, you would want your wires to match your connectors gauge wise, but sometimes that can't happen. Now let me give you a little context as to why we're doing this video. So a while back, we did a video where we were adding lights to our engine sheds. And a hack that we, well not a hack, but a technique we used was to uh, strip the wire, which I will do right here just real quick and show you kind of the idea of what we did. Strip the wire, and again, this is 24 gauge wire, very thin. Give it a twist, and what we were doing was we were doubling it up, like so. I just have it kind of in a hook there, but you can see kind of the intent. And sorry if my finger's in the way, like I said, this is small. We double it up to bulk up the wire, and then we uh, tinned this wire with solder, like really kind of gobbed the solder on. And then we put our connector on, and hopefully, you know, got you know, the gauge of the wire closer to a match with the connector gauge. And that connection has held thus far. But then after we published the video, we got a comment from a uh, viewer by the handle of Paul Stubbs 7678. And he told us that, or suggested to us, that that connection probably wouldn't hold. That um, using kind of tinned wire as a way to bulk up the wire for a connector is probably not the way to go, and it will eventually fail over time. So he did offer us a suggestion uh, to kind of handle that situation where we have a smaller wire, smaller gauge wire compared to the gauge that we're using for a connector. So he suggested that we use a ferrule to do the bulking up versus doubling the wire and doing the soldering. Now. I'll just show you a quick segment, it'll only take a couple minutes, but a quick segment from that video where we actually soldered, we used that technique to double over the wire and solder it. And then we'll join you back here in a couple minutes. I haven't had good luck crimping four connectors onto a wire that small of a gauge here, this 24 gauge wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something a little bit different here. So what I've done is I've kind of doubled over an end of the wire here. As you can see there's like a little loop there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin this together with some solder to kind of thicken it up and stabilize it, stabilize the strands, and then I'm gonna crimp it on there and see what kind of luck we have with that. Anyway, so let's just go ahead and quickly tin this, uh, tin this wire here. And then we'll put our fork connector on here. It's looking pretty good. And then we're gonna pop it in the connector here. I mean, in the crimper. I think that's where I want it, right about there. Let's give it a crimp. Right to the bottom. Oh yeah, got a nice solid connection there. I like that technique. Okay, so now that we've seen that, let's show you the proper technique as suggested by Paul Stubbs 7678. What we wanna do here is we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna clip off our the end of our 24 inch or 24 gauge wire and start again. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to put a, strip this, we'll put a ferrule on the end of that and then crimp the a connector over the ferrule and the ferrule will fill the kind of the space between the lower gauge wire and the connector. And if I do any of this wrong, I hope that Paul Stubbs 7678 leaves another comment and corrects us, but I think this is correct. So normally what I do is we try to use stuff that um, we have lying around the house uh, already. Um, you know, we're weekend warriors like a lot of you guys. And so, um, yeah, we just kind of use what's on hand and try to make the best of that. But I did buy some ferrules uh, on Amazon as uh, Paul Stubbs. Paul, I'm just going to shorten your name to Paul Stubbs um, and leave off the numbers. But um, yeah, so we bought a little set here. Now these ferrules, the key with these ferrules 
is that uh, they, they are non-insulated. So that's kind of the key. So I'm gonna take out the ferrule size that we're gonna use, and that was just kind of a trial and error thing. And I don't know if he can get a zoom on this and get this all in focus. But you can see here on these ferrules, there's a little flared end. And that little flared end should go toward the insulation. You don't want that at the other end. And what the ferrule does, we use these ferrules a lot when we're using, when we're doing uh, connections to like, you know, spring clip terminals uh, where you, know, you kind of open up the, the kind of a spring loaded lever and then you put the, uh, you know, your wire in there and the ferrules make a nice connection with that. So that's typically what we use them for. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna strip our wire. We'll give it a nice twist. This is stranded wire, so you wanna twist it so that when we slide the ferrule on, it goes in nice and clean. And still, it's gonna be kinda of like threading a needle because this is all such small gauge stuff. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out to you is I made a point of, of saying that these ferrules should be, uh, uh, uninsulated. Here's a ferrule. This is a very big ferrule, just so you can see it on camera, but this is a ferrule with insulation. So right here, that yellow plastic bit, that is the insulation. This won't work for this technique, and that's why you're using ferrules that have uh, no insulation. So we're going to do, and again, this is small stuff, and my hands are probably in the way, but we're going to thread the wire onto the ferrule, just like what you would normally do when, you, when you're at, you know, putting ferrules onto the end of wire. You can see we've got a little bit of wire sticking out the end. We're not gonna worry about that just yet. But there's the ferrule on the wire. And the next thing we're gonna do is crimp this ferrule onto the end of the wire. So these are ferrule crimpers right here. You can see it's kind of an ingenious design, really, these uh, ferrule crimpers here. It, uh, it basically crimps a cylinder, if you will. The ferrules are kind of cylindrical, if you can see here into the end of that. So when you crimp these on, you wanna make sure you have a tool that puts equal pressure on all, uh, on all sides, not that a cylinder has sides, but um, all the, the entire surface around the cylinder. And that's what these do really well. So we're gonna slip our ferrule in there and you can see, I'll turn it this way because it's not going all the way through. And then we're just gonna give it a nice crimp the pliers are gonna go, the handles are just gonna go all the way. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice here is you can see the crimp marks here. This ferrule, as small as, it, as small as it is, is even a little too big for this wire, so it is kind of moving on it. And ideally, if we were doing a ferrule, we wouldn't want that. But in this case, it's gonna be okay, because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add our 22 gauge um, terminal end here onto that. Now you want to make sure that that kind of fits into the cylinder barrel there. I call it the barrel. Let's take a closer look at this connector. So I don't know if he can get a good shot looking down there. But um, you know that's a cylinder as well. So the ferrule is kind of sticking right into that and it can actually come out the other end really if we wanted it to. And then the other thing here about these about these connectors is that there's a little seam on the barrel of the uh, of the connector? By barrel, I mean that you know the cylindrical part. And when you crimp these on your crimpers, you want to make sure that that seam is in the U of the crimper. And I'll show you what that what I mean by that. So anyway, we've got our ferrule on the end, you want to make sure that the insulation of the wire is tucked under the insulation of the fork connector. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this off because I do want to kind of trim off that excess wire. And you can see the strands, I'll just fan the strands out there, you can see them on the end there. I'm just going to just cr cr uh, trim those off right to the top of the ferrule. I'm going to throw that back on the connector. And you can kind of see it sticking through there. And now we're going to take our crimpers. And these are ratcheting crimpers. So if, when you start them, they won't be able to back off unless you either release them or you crimp them all the way. And then the other thing I want you to notice about these is that these crimpers are typically color coded. So you can see yellow, blue, and red. Okay, so we're going to match up the color, the red 
to the red connector here. Now, just to give you a little hint or a little clue here, if you look at these connectors here, these are red and blue. That's all we have in here. But if you look at some of these other things here, you're gonna see red, blue, and yellow. So these are all standardized. And the yellow, which is the largest, uh, has a gauge range of 12 to 10 uh, AWG, which stands for American Wire Gauge. And then the blue has a um, gauge of 16 to 14. That's the range of, of the blue color. And then the red color has a range of 22 to 16. And that's where we're getting the 22 gauge for this connector. That's a nice label there. This, this, uh, this container doesn't have that nice label that has the gauges. Anyway, so 22 gauge again to 24 gauge wire. And uh, we're bulking it up with that ferrule. Now we've got our crimpers here. And remember, we want that seam on the, uh, on the connector barrel there to be in the U of the uh, crimpers here. So my color coding is only on one side, so I'm kind of holding these upside down. But when I say the U, this is what I'm talking about. It's kind of inverted here. There's that tooth that, that does the crimping, and then the U kind of holds it. Again, that seam should be facing down. Now, if it's not, your crimp is probably gonna work fine. Now, I'm holding these upside down just so you can see the color coding. So what I'm gonna do here is, again, the, the seam is at the top of that barrel there, so the seam is gonna go into that U, which is where we want it, even though we're kinda of holding the crimpers upside down. So we're gonna go there. Make sure you're holding it in, in good position. And then just crimp it right down. And look at that, we get a nice solid connection. I'm giving it the pull test here. It's not coming out. Now, one thing I wanted to touch base on real quick uh, that I mentioned earlier was that ferrule by itself didn't crimp, the, the size ferrule we were using didn't crimp all around that wire. It was still kind of slidey loose. Um, but what ended up happening is when, when we put the connector on there and crimped the connector, it crimped the whole shebang right down on the wire. So that ferrule kind of got re-crimped on, on top of the wire. So the whole thing as a unit is all nice and solid. So uh, yeah, so there we go. There is a hack that you can use. It's not probably a hack. Everybody probably knew this but me. Okay, so let's just run through this again just real quick, uh, kind of uninterrupted by explanation here. Sure, Jan. So basically, we have a fresh piece of wire. We just want to strip using our wire strippers. We want to twist the, the end of the wire here so that it's nice to a point. The better job you do kind of twisting these strands, especially at the very end, the easier it'll be to thread them into the ferrule. Now with the ferrule, just choose the right size. Remember the ferrule has to fit into the barrel of the connector. So just make sure you use a ferrule that will crimp on the wire decently and will also fit into the um, connector barrel there. So we just chose this size here. And then with the twisted wire, again, it's kind of like threading a needle. There it goes. So that's what that looks like. You'll take your ferrule crimpers here. And I know I'm, you're looking at the back side of the crimp, but basically we'll go on like so. And then just for neatness sake, you can cut off any excess wire that you have hanging over the end of the ferrule. It's not really necessary for the operation. If the ferrule is a little loose, don't worry about it. Then you want to feed your ferrule up into the crimper. And you can see there, kind of the, I intentionally put the end of the ferrule out the end there just so you can kind of see how it goes. But you can just pull it back so it's more reasonably, uh, reasonably placed. And then your ferrule goes into, or your connector goes into your crimpers. Position it correctly, and then just crimp the whole thing down. And like I said, if your ferrule was loose, it won't be after this, because the whole thing will kind of compress down as a unit with the crimp, and then just give it the pull test. I probably have a little bit too much ferrule sticking out the end there, but it's a good visual to, to show you the ferrule coming through the, um, you know, the barrel of the connector there. 
Yeah, so we use four connectors quite a bit. We feel like they're the best kind of connector to use, especially when you're using screw type terminals. You know, they go right in there and they connect real nice. I'm not gonna tighten that down, but you get the idea. So that's why we like these nice connectors at the end of our wires. So anyway, just a nice, uh, a nice little uh, hack by, uh, suggested to us by Paul Stubbs, 7678, uh, from our comments on our video of adding lights to the sheds. So uh, yeah, hope you find it helpful and we'll see you in the next video.